Please welcome the incredible Tracy Matthews. Thank you so much for having me, Renee. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you on. I'm just like swinging my chair. I know. So we're just dancing. We're just letting it all out. Um, I feel like we've been talking about this for so long. So it's finally nice yeah. to, to jump on and chat. I'm excited. How did we meet again? It was through Dan. Well, through Dan. So I met Dan um, at a business event. I was in a mastermind with Ryan Levesque. And they had a mixer. It was this event. Like there was a group of people talking. I walk up, Dan's there. We start talking. He's asking me a little bit about coaching. Then the phone rings and it's you with your kids. Oh. He's like, excuse me, I need to go talk to my wife. So he walks <laughs> away, comes back. And then he starts talking about how amazing his wife Renee is. Oh. <laughs> and so then I don't even remember the first time that we actually met, but I, cause I don't think it was at that mastermind, maybe like an internet marketing party. What about in New York at that lunch with... Oh, that's right. So it wasn't Selena Sue there. The dinner. Yeah, that's what it was. It was the dinner. The dinner. That's what it was. Yeah. That's what it was. That was yeah, you remember ago. better than I do. Yeah. Everything no, starts to blur together after a while. I know. <laughs> well, that's cool. And you were so brilliant. And what I love about you is... I know we talk about, don't talk about age, but I, it always blows my mind. I'm an old you, lady. It's when okay, you tell you me how it. old you are, because I'm like, <laughs> I always think you're way younger than me. <laughs> I'm. It's a, it's true. I'm 52. I'm an old lady, <laughs> and it doesn't make sense because I didn't have kids, so I feel like I don't have the wrinkles that a lot of my friends have from being stressed <laughs> out about their children. Yeah. Now I have Jason's kids that I kind of consider my stepkids, although we're not married, but. I didn't, I didn't start raising them from like, I didn't have to keep them alive when they were infants. So yeah, I don't know. That might that, have something to do with it. Well, and also I, it, not even just like the looks, but just how you show up energetically and you're charismatic and you're always open and up for a good time. And I will oh, say, for sure. you're probably the most smiley person I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you know how to not okay. smile? <laughs> no. Um, no. Okay. Can I tell you a funny story? I yeah. hate it when I'm getting a photo shoot or something like that. And they're like, oh, okay. Do you like one of those, like a smize or one of those serious faces? Like you do it really well. I just saw your recent photo shoot. Yeah. I look so <laughs> dumb. I'm like, if I'm not smiling, I look dumb. So when I was a kid, we had these neighbors and they called, one of them called me Smiley. So that nickname kind of. That's true um, though, but I I feel that says so much about you. I mean, imagine if more people had that, this world would be a different place. It really would be. Yeah. Um, And, you know, there's a reason. Sometimes I laugh and smile at inappropriate times. (laughs) (laughs) Really inappropriate times. (laughs) Um, I can't say it on this podcast, but there was like one thing that happened on my team one time when I was just like really nervous and I started laughing and it came across so bad because someone was in a really bad spot that I was coaching on my team. And I'm just like, ah, that didn't come across. Oh, no, that's the way. Sometimes it's like we don't know how we're going to react. Do we get a little awkward? (laughs) When I I, after I got divorced, when I was in my 30s, I um, was going to therapy and and I would tell my therapist like all these terrible things. And he's like why are you laughing right now? And I'm like, I don't know. I just don't know how to handle it. <laughs> it's like, so you're it's laughing. Like my trauma response. Right. Totally. Cause it could yeah. be a form of crying. It just comes out as a laugh. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So let's get into this. Uh, yeah, let's do it. The audience would love to know, what do you do? So I do a lot of things. Um, I'm a basically like a warrior for creativity is kind of like what I like to think of myself as. I started out my career as a jewelry designer and I've been in the jewelry industry for, I don't know, gosh, well, I'm old. So I already told you that probably like for almost 30 years now, um, first started with the side hustle. And then I had a full-time business where my business was sold. My, excuse me, my jewelry was sold in over 350 stores around the world at all the press, all the things, uh, 2008 happened and that took out the business. It's that's a long story, maybe a story for another time, but, um, I had to reinvent myself in the early in like 2010 and start over. So as I was kind of in this process of reinvention, I'm like, what can I do that still like really supported my creativity and in the jewelry space, but also created the life that I wanted? Because that's really, that was really where I was struggling with that first business. You know, I had all these goals for the business, but I wasn't really thinking about like the impact of like, working so hard in the business and how that would affect my life. And so I built this new business, a custom jewelry business where I designed fine jewelry, mostly engagement rings and wedding bands. 
and work with private clients and built that as a lifestyle business to really support like what I wanted to create in my life. And what I found is that when your business is in alignment with uh, the goals that you have, what you want, how you want your life to look like, your creativity, all these things, like number one, you're so much happier. Number two, you make so much more money. Like it's insane. Like that business, the volume of that business is so much lower than my first company. And I took home like probably 10 times more money a year. And just like your overall enjoyment is because like, I don't know, I don't know about anyone listening here, but I don't think most people actually sign up to necessarily be a workaholic. Um, It's awesome if you love what you do, but the reason why we work is to actually enjoy life. And so that led me on this path of mentoring jewelry business owners. And that's what I've been doing in addition to my jewelry company for the last, I don't know, 12 years or 11 and a half to 12 years or so. I have a company called Flourish and Thrive Academy, and I support jewelry business owners and growing businesses that support their lifestyle goals. And as an offshoot of that, I launched a brand in 2008 called Creatives Rule the World. And I host creativity and wellness retreats for entrepreneurs and other people who just want to spend more time being in creative flow. When did you so start doing that? Well, uh, the original concept happened in 2018. Okay. Um, it took me a few years to like actually get the retreat thing off the ground, but well, I'll be hosting a retreat next year, which is exciting. And Another you just one. did one or you went to one. You didn't host one recently or you did. I did. So I had an event last week where uh, this is more for Flourish and Thrive Academy as our mastermind and momentum coaching program. Cool. cool. Yeah, oh, that's so fun. So do you still design that. jewelry? I do. Um, it's my businesses. You know, I, I like to say like I set up all these systems early on um, where I get a ton of traffic and stuff like that without having to think about it. So I don't really market the company, but I still am working on several projects a month. And it's awesome. I have someone in New York. I moved from New York to Arizona during the pandemic. And I have someone in New York who actually manages my production and does a lot of the work. So it's, uh, and it's awesome because I can still do it on the side while I'm working kind of full-time in another business. Because that's your passion. I love it. Um, so I was reading your bio the other day and there's the thing that stood out. And I'm really curious about how this all came to fruition. But you said that Revlon commissioned you to yeah. make a piece for Halle Berry's 20 year anniversary. Isn't that cool? how did that happen? <laughs> they emailed me. So, you know, it's really interesting. Like you're in publicity, so you get this yeah. and you've been doing it for a while, right? Like yep. when in the, I mean, in the late nineties, you're probably in high school. I don't know, but yep. is that true? Yeah. Just graduating. Actually, I graduated in 1999. Yeah. So I graduated, waited at 89. And um, in the late nineties and early two thousands, like the way that you got exposure was getting your jewelry on celebrities. Yep. That was like a work today though. No, it still works. I think it's different though. Cause it's more pay to play today. Then it would just be like a placement. Mm -hmm. Um, You'd send stuff to a stylist that the celebrity would usually keep the jewelry and they'd wear it and get photographed. So Halle Berry actually bought some of my jewelry at one of my accounts, ABC Home, which was so cool. Um, and the store called me. They're like, Halle Berry bought some earrings of yours. And so, of course, you know, you know that you're like looking for the picture somewhere. I found, got a snapshot of Us Weekly, put it in the thing and put it in my media kit. And then I had, I, I probably had it on my website somewhere. And so I think that they were looking like probably doing some search for jewelry designers. And my name came up in conjunction with that. Wow. So they reached out to me one day. This is probably like five, six years ago and asked me to design this commemorative piece. And I was like, I'm down. Like, let's do this. And it was really cool. So we did something. I, I believe it was something that was like a, a variation on the Roman numeral 20 for her 20 year anniversary is a platinum and diamond necklace with champagne diamonds. It was really cool. What was it the 20 year anniversary of her being like their spokesmodel? Oh, what? She did it for 20 years? Yeah. I mean, talk about another legend who looks like crazy young. She's probably like 65. <laughs> I mean, maybe not, but like <laughs> some people just have it. It's just like, I don't know. If I look at my mom, yeah. I'm like, and my grandma, I don't know. I don't have a chance, but hey, <laughs> I this is, right, okay, this is so random. You can cut this part out if you have to, but is it better <laughs> if I look here or up here? I'm like, don't know where to look. I'm like, where am I looking? <laughs> um, wherever, right? What's the option there down or up? Well, it's like my eyes are looking down at the No, computer. down's fine. Yeah, okay. that's fine. Um, Keep my eyes up. So that is cool. So then this 
creating this commemorative piece is like, in my mind, a jewelry designer's dream. Oh, it was so fun. And then there's a lot it, of pressure though. Yeah, no crap. And then what did it do for you career wise? She doesn't like it. You're like, uh, right? What? <laughs> I know. I out. didn't get a picture of her wearing that piece, unfortunately. <laughs> like, I don't know. I feel like celebrities sometimes get so many gifts from people. Oh, they're know. just like, oh, okay, thanks. You know, I know. Like, I'm working with, I guess it's a celebrity. I don't know, influencer. Are they the same thing now? What's the difference between a celebrity so. and an influencer? That's a really good question. So, I feel like a celebrity is someone who's in the movies or TV. Probably. Probably. Music. And then an influencer is like someone who made themselves famous online. Mm, that's a good point. But that's what I think there's of it. a influencer that I'm working with that has over 100 million followers across her social channels. Oh, wow. Posted stories on Instagram yesterday about all the gifts that she receives. And these are like not cheap gifts. Yeah. From fans. And I'm wow. like, if anybody wants to send me like anything Gucci or like Saint Laurent, I'm like, down. my address in the bottom of my email <laughs> newsletter. <laughs> so if you subscribe to my newsletter, you can send me all this. <laughs> it's, but then it makes me think like, do they even appreciate these things? They have so much of it. Like it's got to be annoying no. at one point. Well, so one of the ways that I got a lot of celebrity play praise excuse me, celebrity placements, excuse me, I just got Invisalign, so it's hard to talk with it, um, is that I had friends, because I lived in LA for a long time, and we kind of, I feel like, I lived in LA and then San Francisco and New York, but when I was in LA in college and stuff like that, a lot of my friends from university went to the movie industry, and so I had some connections there. One of my friends, she now works for Disney, she's like the CMO for like one of Disney's affiliates or something like that. But she was working for Fox TV at the time. And American Idol was one of the shows that she managed. So she would just hook me up with the stylist. And I don't know why I'm telling you this, but oh, th this is why. Because she would say that they would get tons of boxes of swag for these celebrities. And the, the publicist would just go through them. <laughs> start taking all this well, yeah, no crap. out of the boxes. Like it usually doesn't even get to the celebrity. Yeah. So it's funny because I don't think my husband's a celebrity, <laughs> but, but he, he kind of is. He gets shipped stuff all the time. And yeah. whenever there's chocolate involved, it's mine. I don't care. He doesn't eat yeah. it. Sorry. But unsolicited stuff, because there's enough of it, just like it hardly gets a wink. And yeah. a lot of times it's, it's a nuisance. And some of these packages are so beautiful. And the biggest shame is when people send stuff and they don't put who it's from. They forget. They, I don't know. We can never find it. We can't even think of them. I know. What's the but like, And then some people send us stuff and Dan, Dan's like, do you know these people? I'm like, no, I don't. But all this to say, because gifting is a huge thing in PR. It's a yeah. huge thing. But if it's unsolicited, it'll just get pushed aside or it'll get picked up by the publicist <laughs> and nothing will come of it. And so like there's a whole part of this that goes into the effort of making sure that this is something that is welcomed and is expected. So then when it does show up, there's an action that you want them to take as opposed to just being pushed to the side. So did they ask Dan or do, did you ask this influencer to take a picture of the gift or put it on or whatever? No. Is that like the exchange? No? Oh, for Dan? No, because he puts know, on, the, on the bottom of his newsletter his mailing address, right? Mm -hmm. And which you have to anyways. But also on his website, he says, if you want to mail me anything, like you got to take that off because some of the if stuff, you want to mail me anything, is he looking for free now. stuff? Dan, we no, love you. I don't know. Seriously. I don't know why. <laughs> but I mean, some of the stuff we get is like crazy awesome. But then I can't tell you how many sets of tea we have now. So please don't say Are you anything. worried about people just showing up at your house? But it's not our house. It's our P.O. box. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, so nowhere that's okay. near us. No. Okay, good. <laughs> but yeah. I'm like, because that's no. a real risk. <laughs> it's totally people. a real risk. Yeah. No, no, no. It's a P.O. box. And I say this to all entrepreneurs is you never have your home and mailing address to be your business yeah. address. Don't put those two together. Um, okay. So let's get back to business here. Let's talk about creativity because you are yeah. a very inspiring woman, well, super you. creative. And I have a question about creativity. So yes. why do you think creativity is the biggest asset for entrepreneurs and in their life? Well, I mean, there's so many reasons, but the first is this. Um, do you know what Maslow's hierarchy of needs is? And yeah. yeah. So it's like a pyramid. Um, yeah. If I could share a screen, I could share a, a thing, but Google it if you don't know what that is. Anyway, it's, it's a path to like getting your needs met as, you know, a human being. 
And at the top of that pyramid is self-actualization. And inside that little, the little top triangle are things like uh, creativity, which is at the top of it. And so creativity is one of the fastest paths to self-actualization and understanding not only who you are as a person, but also bringing your gifts and arts into the world. And when we were kids, we were highly creative. I mean, do you remember when your boys were like really little? Oh, like, were they like creative. coloring and then creating like fantasy stuff they all the time? They still do that. Yeah. I mean, I suppose 10 is still kind of little, but yeah. yeah. But like, we're so creative when we're kids and some people end up like leaning into that and it's like valued by their parents and some people it's not. And they're like, go study, study, study. And they, in a lot of instances and in cultures, the creativity is sort of like taught away. And there's a song, I think, by a band called Travis that says something like, you know, you know everything when you're born and then they teach it all away. Yeah. And I feel that way sometimes about creativity. So mm -hmm. the reason why I think creativity is so important is because, number one, it is the core of all the ideation and strategic energy that you bring to your business. And so um, it is one of the fastest paths to uh, fulfillment and creating positive outcomes for anything that you're doing. And it's, I think, one of the biggest lenders and supporters for problem solving in anything that you have. And then on obvious levels, like creativity uh, allows you to make beautiful things, write beautiful things, say beautiful things. Like it's just really that energy behind growth, flow, and ideation for a business owner. And really, quite frank frankly, for anyone. Totally. Um, have you done The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron? A long time ago. I haven't done it recently, but I should go, like do it again. I know. So I did it a year ago-ish, but it was one of the, like, the end points of a like, five-year journey in, quote, finding myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. But part of it in that book, she says that God's gift to you is to be an artist. Yeah. And like, basically it's your, you have to be of service to God to find your artistry and that creative path to give back to the world, to give back to God. And that was I powerful. So, yeah. It's so powerful. And I so believe that. And you know, it's so crazy because people say all the time, like I'm not creative at all. And I don't believe that. I think everyone has their own creative gifts. And when my, you know, in like 2006 or seven, um, my friend art came into my jewelry studio when I was in New York and he was helping me build out some financial models. Like he was in uh, finance, like he was doing financial models like all day long. And he's asking me some questions. He's walking around my studio and he's like, Oh my gosh, you're so creative. Like I don't have a creative bone in my body. And he comes back like a couple days later and still the same thing. Like you're so creative, like all this stuff. And he starts walking me through this financial model. I'm like, how in the heck did you do that? Like that's creative. Like people don't, I think sometimes people don't consider like what the, the value that they actually bring to the world and how their creativity and their right brain actually supports that. And I, I really believe that more, the more people lean into creativity, like, and their natural gifts and the more that they allow or create the support structures around that so that they can be creative, just the more success that they will have always. Oh, too, like so true. And it got me thinking, what is your definition of creativity? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> to me, it's like when, like when you're in that energy, and I'm calling it energy because it can be a lot of different things, right? Of just like being in flow, of feeling fulfilled, of coming up with amazing ideas, developing art, you know, all these things, bringing beauty into the world. I, th I think what it really comes down to is kind of being in that energy of flow state, like where you just feel like time and space and like everything starts to melt away and you're just coming up with something and you're just like, how did yeah. that come about? Do you think that we've mislabeled the word creativity lately? I do. Um, I mean, I haven't really thought about it that way. I, I think that people think of creative people as artists and that's not necessarily what like a painter or is. a jewelry designer. Yeah. Yeah. They think of it, I have this painting I did. It's not in this room. It's in the other room of my um, work apartment. But people like come in here or they're like, I'm on a Zoom or something. They're like, oh, wait, who made that painting? I want to get it. And I'm like, I did. They're like, 
oh, like that's what they think of as like a creative person. But I, my creativity is like actually really expressed mostly in like how I coach my students. Um, the ideas I come up with to grow my business, right? The way I pro- solve problems. Like that's when I feel like the most creative. Yeah, like systems designs, program yeah. designs. All that how stuff. you lay your furniture out and how yeah I'll go to it's a like self expression maybe that's like another thing it's like that's more aggressive. form of self expression like how you express yourself that's into it. the world that's yeah. totally it um so that means that even a, an accounting nerd can be a creative oh, yeah. because they look at numbers as art and they're like I, I, I love percent <laughs> Yeah, I 100% support that statement. <laughs> I'll go into like buildings or sometimes when I have a problem falling asleep, I calm myself by redesigning buildings, redesigning like what? entrance ways. Yeah, this is the crazy thing. An architect? I may be in, I feel like I was actually a former FBI agent, but yeah. I think there's like an I can see that. Thing. You're kind of a badass. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm like, it started with my kids' old daycare when we were living in San Diego. And I'm like, man, that is like such a great flow. Why can't all buildings be like that? The way that you drop your kid off, sign them in and leave. It was just like, and like, mm-hmm. have you ever been, maybe you haven't, but the Disney cruises. There oh, was yeah. like, I've never been on Disney Half cruises. of the Lido deck, whatever the deck is that they're on, <laughs> is for the kids club. And it's like super security, right? And the kids have these bracelets they can't take off mm-hmm. so you can track them on your app. But when you go to drop them off, they have these two little holes where you put your hand in and you... And it sanitizes your hands, it washes your hands, and then it dries them so that you go in with clean hands and then you scan your kid in. It's like a system. And I'm like, wow, that yeah. is super creative because what they so got to optimize for is sanitization and security. But there's enough people mm-hmm. coming and going with their kids that they have to make it seamless. Disney, just they get it. They're super creative on so many levels. I love it. Of course. But when they it comes are. to business, the creativity can be expressed in ways like maybe it is an awesome financial model for your business yeah. and it might not look i mean my brain's not making a financial model we need someone to do it i'm not doing it no i will <laughs> color code the lines though but yeah. i won't do anything i'll do that too i'll put like the freeze on it oh yeah with the freeze. i can add i can add one row at a time i can't do the crazy formulas but filters like one row. Oh, i know some, <laughs> i had one woman come in she was like someone i'd hired to do some sort of pitching with me and she's like it's really bugging me can i update your spreadsheets like ah, i don't really want you to touch and then she just went in and just like in two seconds like added these filters and these funnels and and i was like whoa like i'd never seen it before and it was so cool spreadsheet master is like blow my mind totally so talking about creativity and you say it's a self-expression it's when you're in flow but we often hit these what we call writer's blocks or moments where we're like stuck. What do we do now? Mm -hmm. I can't think. How do I self-express? What are some tips on getting out of that rut? That's a great question. I think that all of us experience that. And I usually think that the reason why that happens is because we're not allowing ourselves the space, time, and energy to actually be creative. Like, I don't know about you, but like we were talking a little bit before and you're talking about how you're like, um, like building your funnel or pipeline or whatever for your PR publicity company and all that stuff. Yeah. And when you're in a really busy time with work, it's like task, 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 task. You're just like scheduled to the hilt and there's no space to think. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you're frustrated because you're like in this granular moment, like, Oh, I'm, I can only focus on the things in front of me instead of thinking about stuff. Right. And then we sit down, we're like, oh, I have to write that email or come up with an idea for my program design or design a piece of jewelry or whatever it might be, design a spreadsheet. And you're sitting there and you're trying to decompress for a long time from all this other stuff that you're doing. And maybe you have an hour. It's just like not enough time to be able to get back into that zone. And so when you land in a creative rut or a writer's block or something where you aren't feeling that flow of creativity... You have to figure out how to get out of it. And now one of the things that I I remember reading a book a long time ago, I can't even remember which book it was, but in that book, they talked about how Google had, they told their employees that one day a month that you had a day to just do whatever you wanted, any project you wanted to work on. I then decided to take that concept and do it once a week for myself. And I started calling it creative day. I don't know what they call it. Maybe they called it creative day too. I don't know. 
But it was a time and space to not have any agenda, but to just get out of your own way and work on the things that you wanted to work on. And so when you are in a creative rut or you feel out of flow, what you have to do is give yourself that time and space to get back into um, the energy of creativity. And if you're stuck, some of the ways to do that are through you know, different art forms. Um, first, first and foremost, you need the time and space. So whether it's a day, a week, a month, like everyone's got like different things that they're trying to create, right? You need to get into your body usually. So movement helps, like whether you're someone who likes to exercise or lift weights or you want to go dance or do yoga or something like that. Some of my best ideas, I used to teach yoga like in another lifetime, um, in this lifetime, but in another lifetime, <laughs> uh, another decade maybe. And I would get the best ideas for everything in business when I was just sitting on the mat. And it's like a time when you're not supposed to be thinking about that stuff. But the reason why it works is because you're not like, you're not pushing yourself to try to think about the thing or create the thing that you're trying to do. So getting into your body can be super helpful. Um, I think having new experiences and, you know, doing something that's completely unrelated to like what you're trying to do can help get you back into that creative energy. Um, I like doing retreats and, and going away. That's one of the reasons why I host these creativity and wellness retreats, because like, as business owners, we're so busy freaking running our businesses that we don't often take the time to take care of ourselves. Right. And so one of the ways that people can do that is like, go find a group or a mastermind or, or something that uh, some space that you can go to, to get away from your business so that you can actually, so that you actually will take the time to think about your business and reconnect to it. Um, and I think like another that your Dan talks about this in his book, but it's another thing that I really focus on too, <laughs> is um, having theme days or days that you only focus on certain tasks during the week, because that context switching thing that a lot of people talk about is a real thing. So if you're trying to do a sales call, which you may have done today, and then back that up with the podcast interview, and then go back to doing sales calls, like it's hard to get in the flow of either. So I know try to like batch day. your days in, in of the types of things that you're doing. So like, one day a week for meetings, one day a week for calls, one day a week for coaching or whatever you do, one day a week for like big picture strategy yeah, or months, break out your months. I don't know. So that's yeah. what works for me. We did, um, we hosted a preloaded marketing year workshop this week, which feels like a week ago. This was two days ago. <laughs> I want to go to one of those yeah. at some point. And I just, I just taught people how to take their entire year and preload it with the big events. These are like launches, announcements, and then you mm -hmm. work in what, what are called three-month intervals or 12-week intervals mm -hmm. where it's like a quarter. So it's yeah. like, yeah, you have this big goal for the year and all these things happening, but chunk it up into three months because then working on bite-sized versions of one big task is easier to swallow. Yeah, but the thing sure. I loved about this is... Um, so going back to what you were saying is my assistant knows when I'm on a walk or a hike because she gets yeah. all the voxers. <laughs> yeah. She's like, wait, wait, what's going yeah. on? Like Renee what's must be hiking. On? It's like a million yep. things. But I also have an electric drum set that sits right next to me to my left. You play the drums. Oh my God. I love yeah. you more. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So Renee, you know that my secret fantasy is to be the lead singer in a band, but my second secret fantasy is to be the lead singer in a band and the drummer. <laughs> so play drums and sing at the same time yeah like um who's that guy phil collins <laughs> oh okay yeah you i mean you can totally be like phil if you want to so i actually so total sidebar on this but talk about creativity is a couple years ago actually prior well, just it was the fall going into the pandemic so 2019 yeah. when i started to take drum lessons it was only that long ago and you know, my husband is very like, what's the objective of the thing you're doing? There's always yeah. has to be like, what is the outcome? Like, I just want to take drum lessons. Why? Like, go, why? Why does it matter? <laughs> why? So finally, I decided, you know what, let's try this out. Maybe I want to be on stage someday. Well, there's a guy on in Moncton, New Brunswick, so on the East Coast of Canada, who puts on these like, um, I, like, I guess, smaller versions of Silk du Soleil. And he's been doing it for a while. And they're really beautiful performances. I'd been to a few. Yeah. And I said, you know what? Maybe one day I will 
be on his stage and I will play drums. And I envisioned me on these big drums with another woman next to me. And we're dancing through a segment on these drums. And it's part of the show. And I envisioned it and I I just made this so clear. And then I said, I'm going to reach out to Matt who puts this entire production on. Stop and it. I said, Matt, this is crazy, but I have an idea. Can I come meet you? So he brings me into his office and it's just floor to ceiling costumes. And like, you think walking into a Cirque du Soleil change room, like that's what it was like. And I'm sitting here. I'm like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I've never performed anything. He doesn't even know I play drums. And I was like, so Matt, I started taking drum lessons a couple months ago and I want to play on your stage. And he's like, okay. I'm like, oh no, you're not supposed to say yes. <laughs> you're supposed to say no. Who are you? And what happened? Well, we got into talking about what the story was and the storyline and what it would look like and all these things happened. Then COVID happened and everything was shut down. And so it's still a dream of mine to perform drums with another woman next to me. So if you want to come and just play drums with me, we can go on a tour if you want. That would be amazing. Oh, my God. We could be like (laughs) Sheila E. It was just like, man, 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 man. yeah, I don't know. But what I love about it is like that self-expression and like yeah. you really do need to give your brain a time to pause. And when you learn a new language, instruments are a new language. It actually opens up new neural pathways. So you become smarter by trying something new. Yeah. And you are um, Cal, New- New- Cal Newport. Oh my gosh. I hope yeah. that's his name. He says that most people don't only have the capacity for creative work in 57 minute intervals. Interesting. So to say that you can just sit at your desk for eight hours and be the most productive version of yourself is a lie. Yeah. It's a lie. Yet we are forced into these confines of what an eight hour day should look like, 40 hours a week. That's the most productive version of you, which I call bullcrap on. No. And it's just exhausting. Exactly. When was the last time you worked like a super crazy week? Well, last week, because I had my event. Mm -hmm. That's an anomaly though. Yeah. Like um, I would say that I have them. It's usually during our launches and it's usually like when I'm on camera, like for three hours a day for five days straight. Those are hard. Cause it's like Isn't- you're on camera, like doing the thing and then back, like recapping with the team, like improving the strategy, yeah. you know, getting more stuff done. And you're batching podcast recordings now, right? I, yeah, I've been doing that for a long time. And that's always blows my mind. So explain to me how you do that. <laughs> Patching podcasts. Yeah. So what I prefer to do, it doesn't always work out that way. Cause like, it seems like I've had a hard time, like wrangling some of the guests I want to get on and they're, they are a little sporadic. So, but in an ideal world, what I would do is batch a day and I would record five to six podcasts in one day and then get them all to my team, like record the intros and outros. Cause my podcast is usually about 30 minutes. And so if we schedule an hour, we have like a little time to talk before record the thing, then I can get the intro and outro done like right after the interview. And then, um, I try to do those like once a month or once every six to eight weeks, yeah. depending on how many people are I'm interviewing. Like I go in seasons with my podcast of doing solo shows versus okay. interviews. So there's like a mix of both. But that's how I do it. It works really well for me because I used to do this thing where it would just be like every, you know, here are the days of the week that I would record a podcast. And then it would be hard to plan because then at the last minute, someone would book a time and then it kind of derailed the other thing that I was going to do that day. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we, my cleaning lady was a saving grace because I used to record everything on Thursdays, but in the PR world, that's a prime pitching day. So I really have to guard my days like wednesday thursday are the best days um a little bit tuesday too but mondays and fridays are great and podcasts yeah and i'm really trying to so we did this month it's october at the time of this recording and we did a master your marketing mindset series so i because i had a theme i preloaded all the guests that i wanted and like the topics to talk about so we were recording stuff in august to be ahead of the game so that by the time September came, all the content for October was done. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So like like thinking ahead and yeah. Do you plan your podcast? Like you don't plan it that far in advance? Well, I do like for the most part, um, the stuff that we're recording now gets published in a month, but I'd love to be like a couple months ahead. That would be the dream. Here's the thing. 
I go through seasons of having like three months recorded in advance. And then like yesterday I was recording something for next week because it was like, I wanted to do a recap of my event. And then a guest I was going to have on like fell through. So I had to move them out of the spot. So I still, you know, I try to get ahead too, but sometimes, sometimes you have to be flexible. That's another thing about creativity. You just have to like roll with things sometimes and not be so structured. Oh, I know. And then we decided to do interview based only and then add a second episode a week for solo episodes. So for the past three months, I've been doing two weeks and the solo episodes I find are, are easier to manage because it's just yeah. like you talk about the stuff you're good at and you just download mm-hmm. a couple, but still those have been the worst ones for me <laughs> to record. Why? Because I have to rely on myself to show up to record. Oh, you're them. such a badass though. <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. Anyway, I love this. Okay. So, I mean, the topic of the show that I want to talk about is building a creative business that doesn't trap you. So when it comes to the importance of creativity beyond just being like creating the beauty of like the work that we do. Um, how do we build businesses that don't trap us? Oh gosh, that's a great question. Um, first you have to be really clear on like people say this all the time, like the, why you're doing this, but like, what are the motivations that you want to reach your goals? And like, I think about it like this, like, you know, I, I'm going to go back to what I talked about at the beginning of the episode. Like the reason why a business feels like it's a trap to certain people is because it's not supporting the life you want. So if you're, if you're building a business just based solely on revenue or like what you think you should have, and you're not really taking consideration into like what kind of time you need off of the work, off of work or how much money you need to be taking home or, or whatever those things are, it can easily like create this trap around you. And so my biggest suggestion is to get really clear on like what you want to create for your personal life and like what you want that to look like and get really clear on it. Like my favorite thing to do is like visioning exercises, like with people, Mm -hmm. it's like really help them paint the picture of what that looks like to visualize it, to, um, to get into that feeling state of what it would feel like to have that already. And then go back and like have that in your mind and then say like, okay, well, how does the business support that? And here's the thing. We are human beings. We we are complex. There are going to be many times when you feel trapped in your business. The most important thing to do when you feel trapped is to acknowledge that you're trapped and figure out like, how did this happen? And how, well, how do I get out of it? Right. And from there, um, especially if you understand like why those personal goals are important, it can be really easy to unwind that. And if you are, you know, if you have programs or stories or anything like that, that's working in the background, that's kind of like creating this trap for you, get the help from someone who is skilled at like therapy or something like that to help you remove that stuff, because it's going to just keep following you no matter what. If you don't clear it, you're going to be like in a trauma bond relationship with your business or whatever the thing is forever until you understand what that is. Yeah. I know that sounds really woo and weird, but it's the truth. Um, I could tell you stories about how I've done, I've created this trap for myself in my businesses. Um, and then the next thing is, you know, this is really interesting. I, I mentioned earlier that I just had a retreat here for um, my coaching program in, in Arizona. One of the speakers, she came up and she said, someone asked her a question along the lines of like, well, how do you get motivated? I don't know exactly what the question is, but something like this. How do you, um, like, what are the best steps? Like if you're feeling burned out to like get out of that, to reach a big goal, something like that. Cause the, the topic was burnout and overwhelm. And she's like, you know, I was working with a coach one time. Her name is Kate Byers. I want to give her credit for this. I was working with a coach one time and, um, you know, I had this big goal. I was feeling really burned out, but I had this big goal. I wanted to um, make $6 million in my business. And she's like, okay, so why do you want to reach that? She's like, well, because I want to do this thing with my kid and I want to be able to like, you know, that would give me the resources to do, go like live in a month on an island and to do this and that and this. And the coach said to her, she's like, well, why don't you just start doing those things now instead of when you reach the goal and see what happens? And she said that year... She ended at the end of the year, she ended up reaching her goal of $6 million in revenue in her business. Wow. And the thing that everyone in the, that room, the reason why they thought that was so powerful and what my huge take home of this is we're like putting our life on hold to reach some like um, 
esoteric goal that may or may not happen. And a lot of times we end up becoming workaholics and like doing all this stuff in our business and trapping ourselves into like, into this rut of like, just working harder instead of like being smart about what we're doing. But what if we were to just do the thing and see what would happen and maybe everything else would fall into place? Cause I really, and I'm totally guilty of this. I think that we probably only need to do probably about 50% of the work that we're doing in our company company to really make a difference. The rest of it is just like not really getting utilized anyway. Well, it's like the, the pressure thing. Like if you're only given a certain amount of time to complete a task, yeah. you're going to use that time to complete the task. Yeah. So like I always use this example. If I give you two hours to write me a blog post, you'll take two hours. But if I give you two weeks, you'll take two weeks. Exactly. And there's a term for this, but I forget what it's called. I know exactly what you're talking about. I can't remember. Is it yeah. the, pr- not the Pareto principle? Well, it is, it is the Pareto principle, right? Like 20% or 80% of your revenue comes from 20% of your customers. 80% yeah. of your revenue comes from 20% of your marketing initiatives. Yep. So why are we filling the blanks of our day with stuff that just is meaningless? Yeah. We should all just schedule one hour a day of work and see what we get done. You would, like, <laughs> I dare you. To do that in a day. What would you do? Wow, I can't even think about that because, huh? Anyway, we just have to hire a lot of assistants. <laughs> okay, uh, I have one last question for you. Yeah. When I ask you what it means to be a wild woman, what is that to you? Ah, uh, what does that mean? To be creative and to live a life that's like on purpose and free. Like, just to enjoy the journey. I love it. Well, Tracy, if anyone wants to go find you online, where can they go to find you? They can find me over at creativesworldtheworld.com. You can also find me on my podcast, Thrive by Design, and over on social media at Tracy Matthews NY. Woohoo! Thanks for joining me. Thank you.